First on the agenda, Ashley Havenstrike, Helping Services, Proclamation of Tobacco Awareness. Lana. All right. Well, thank you guys for allowing me to come talk with you guys today. Um, it's something that we like to do every year just to kind of give you an update as to what we did um, last year, what um, what efforts are going to be going um, forward this year. Um, so as for last year, we continued our partnership with um, youth education as far as connecting with um, seventh grade here in Decora, um, where we give um, presentations on the harms of um, all tobacco products, including the newer ones, um, such as electronic smoking devices. Um, we also partnered with the um, South Minnesota group. So that's um, their youth group that they have there at the high school. And they um, put together a couple of after school um, opportunities for um, different um, elementary, middle school age um, students. And sent, so through those after school opportunities, we provided the Southwind um, School District. And then also um, we continue to work with your guys' um, Decora um, tattoo group. And so um, the youth opportunity to educate their peers on, on tobacco, but that group also takes on other substances as well. Um, so this year we just um, had um, the I Step Summit, so it's our statewide um, where youth youth leadership groups from all across the state get to attend. Unfortunately, we did not have any to, um, of our students from Wenatchee County attend that. However, um, we do hold a more localized one, which is offered to um, my six county service area. And so Decora will be present for that. And so they will get the same opportunity of half the day will be um, education on a variety of different top topics, such as um, tobacco and baby being one of them, um, safe medication practices, marijuana, alcohol being the other topics. And then the other half of the day will be um, youth leadership um, building skills. And then through there, they'll get to identify um, what uh, issues they want to so um and then in addition to that we will um continue adult presentations just to kind of give them updates on the and what the um, newest products are and what um concerns around some of those products as well as far as youth use um and then uh as for the Tobacco Awareness Week, we really just like to use this as um, a platform to encourage any businesses to bring awareness to our free cessation resources that are out there to help um, any islands quit as well. Do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, other than that, that's about all I have. I can read from the Pocket Proclamation or I won't bore you with that. Um, whatever. Or do you guys have any questions? Mm -hmm. Is it so? Is it real long? I mean, it would be nice to hear the proclamation. It's not too long. That's all right. Do you, everybody? Yeah, you have until one or two. So, yeah. it kills more people than alcohol, AIDS, car crashes, illegal drugs, murders, and suicides combined. Um, tobacco use is the leading cause of preventable disease, disability, and death in this country. And studies show that tobacco is a harmful substance to both users and non-users. More people need to become aware of the dangers of smoking, varieties of tobacco um, products, second and third hand smoke, um, whereas there's no safe level of um, second hand smoke, even if it's outdoors. About 41,000 um, deaths a year are contributed to second hand smoke, with 400 mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, the Iowa Youth Survey 2021, which is this the biggest um, youth data that we have, um, shows about 22% of 11th graders in Winnipeg County reported ever using an e-cigarette, with 6th grade reporting um, 3%. And just to make it known, 6th um, grade, so I really don't have any data um, lower than that to show to you. However, um, I was just meeting with a 
school in one of um, the six counties that I serve, and they um, said that they just caught a fourth grader last week. So this is happening younger and younger um, each year. So about 25% um, of the eighth graders in Winnesheet County who use these cigarettes reported first age of use being um, between the ages of 11 and 12. Um, so now, therefore, will be the Winnesheet County Board of Supervisors to proclaim that November 12th through the 18th, 2023, as Northeast yeah. Iowa Tobacco Awareness Week in Winnesheet County. Thank you. Um, here's the proclamation. If you have any, you can just sign up. We can always sign on the back. Yeah, if you want to do that too, that's good. Are we making progress? Or are the trends showing improvement? Or are we it's kind of spreading water? Um, you know? So the past 30 day use for the Iowa Youth Survey did show a decrease. Um, however, uh, as far as like what we're hearing from schools and our youth groups, they don't believe that's going down. They feel like it's getting worse. And um, another thing uh, that one of the people said is it's happening younger and younger. So they're confirming that like we're seeing this. Is there a lack of awareness of the hazards of vaping in this and electronic cigarettes? Is that is that a bigger contributing factor than than just the the ones that can find eight bucks to buy a pack of cigarettes? Um, the, yeah, I think I think people think they have a good understanding, but um, yeah, I still think there's a lack of awareness because people still think that it's um, safe in terms of um, the yeah. traditional cigarettes. But another thing um, that I think is an issue is I brought some products just, just to kind of share with you. Um, but we usually do hidden in plain sights, and so we have like different products that we hide within the room, and then, then adults have to go through and identify these products. Um, but the thing is, um, when you look at these products, they look small, and then also the type, the amount of nicotine that's advertised in these are um, advertised as five percent. Well, um, I don't know what you guys think about five percent, but to me that sounds really low, right? Um, I was just meeting with an adult the other day that said that um, they're not a nic they don't smoke or anything like that, but they decided to pick up an electronic smoking device for the first time. They said, well, it's just it's just water vapor and there's only 5% nicotine, so there's not that much in it. Well, 5%, you really have to kind of do some research as to what 5% is, because this is 5% supposedly, and so is this. Um, however, there are 50 cigarettes worth of nicotine um, equivalency in this um, puff bar right here. Um, also, in this little small device, there's about 400 cigarettes worth of nicotine. So I believe people pick them up because um, obviously it looks cool, right? Um, and then also, um, just not understanding how much nicotine is in here. And then um, even if we found out, like did the math and figured out how much nicotine was in here. Um, this is a whole different type of nicotine. So um, in our traditional uh, cigarettes, there's like, uh, it's more a harsh base nicotine. So if you were to smoke a lot of cigarettes in a short amount of time, you'd end up getting a sore throat. Um, however, this is um, what we call nicotine salts, which um, is created by introducing benzoic acid to the products. And so um, more nicotine reaches the brain at much faster rates. So these products um, can be said to um, cause nicotine dependence much quicker than what our traditional um, tobacco products are. So I think um, with a combination of lack of knowledge and how potent these things are, um, is a huge issue and talk about what it does to the lungs yes and so nicotine in and of itself can be harmful um simply because it can restrict our airways you know it's also um, with it being a stimulant can be um have um be very hazardous on a cardiovascular system increasing the risk for um stroke and heart attack do they seem to consume more of the e-cigarette is there more a higher use than comparable with cigarettes like if somebody smoked a pack a day, would that be equivalent to what many of them use in an e-cigarette? I'm ignorant, so I would right. ask. Right, and I think it depends. However, yes, I do believe that they're consuming more just because if you think about it, people that smoke, they'll go outside, have a cigarette, come back in and do whatever they need to do, right? Um, but with these things being easily um, hidden, they, you know, people can be puffing on these things all day and not truly know how much they're taking in, right? Whereas um, cigarettes, you can kind of measure how much you're taking in. 
And then also there's not the um, negative consequence, like if you smoke too much, you'll end up getting a sore throat. Um, that does not include these products. I think we need a motion to I move to approve. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to declare October 12th through the 18th Tobacco Awareness Week. Sorry, November. November. Sorry. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? She carries an Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very much. Thank you. And thanks for your work. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And if you guys have any adult groups that would um, benefit from hearing some information. I think you guys have Right after we get done with the picture here. Um, whichever works best. You see it all? Yep, you're in there. Thank you. 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 You don't want me to speak over here. Hello, my name is Carol Dow, and I'm here to uh, bring to you at the, at the VFW tomorrow night. I apologize for the short notice uh, that the uh, Retrieving uh, Freedom Dog Training Group of Nonprofit from Waverly will be up here uh, with a veteran with PTSD with his service dog, sharing his story of before and after his dog. It's quite Heart moving. I, I have a real heart for my husband and I for uh, the veterans. <laughs> uh, there will be that sharing and also the um, capability. If you want to uh, take a puppy at about eight to 10 weeks and have this dog for uh, to two years, the veterinary costs are taken care of. And um, then the dog will be turned over to the training center with um, uh, the final training and match with the veteran. It was very impressive to see how they work with the uh, dogs, preparing them um, on command. Just a couple of things, if I may share. Um, when a veteran is experiencing a nightmare or tremors, uh, they have the dog trained. He'll just come right to their lap, let's say with his muzzle. If it's intense, a little bit more presence and a little bit more until the veteran comes. It's really quite impressive. Another instance might be, let's say that someone's following very close, let's say in a line up at the Walmart or wherever, and the dog will just come around and be a barrier between that person behind. The training is um, just remarkable. They can pick up things, they can open doors. Um, okay. They're just that unconditional love. Anyway, thank you. you if you have any thank questions, you, please, I'm, I'll do my best. We're volunteers, um, and we encourage you to come this at 5 o'clock at the VFW tomorrow. All right, okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so thank much. You. Next on the agenda, 9.45, Karen Schluter, Middle Kelmer Road Complaint. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, everybody. As you know, I'm the girl that complains about the Middle Kelmer Road, and I probably will continue until something is done. I know the situation that you are in as far as an engineer. I did not bring any Band-Aids with me this time because if I had to um, Band-Aid you folks, you guys would look like mummies. So therefore... I know the situation with the engineer, but we need to get this on the docket for some time in the future because this has gone on and on and on. And I think you all can attest to that. So, anybody have anything to say? 
you and many others <laughs> yeah. on other roads as well. I wish we so, could do more. I wish we could do more. Good. Oh, we know our hands going to be tied four years because you're going to property tax and it's going to be, yeah, money is going to be too tough to come by. Is there any way that you guys can fix the bad spots where the cattle crossings are, where you do, 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 do it's just like a big dip. You know, you're in a dip and then you hit another one. You know, it's just constantly coming up the, the hill by Tinties is horrible. So one thing you can do is talk to our state senator to see what he can do with the state to help us out. I have. Keep yeah. talking to Keep talking to Mike. I have. Yeah, he's on the transportation committee. I think more people need to. Yeah. So they hear the real problems that we're trying to address. Mm-hmm. Something needs to be done. Yeah. Because like I said, I've been out there over 20 years and last I knew it was on a five-year plan and I've been waiting for that five-year plan. So you can go ask for it next door and see exactly what's on it. Ask who? The engineer's office. Okay. They can print a five-year plan out for you. Yeah. But this won't be on the five-year plan, I'm sure. Not right? at this time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, enough said. I want action. Right. And once we get a new engineer in place, you know, keep having the conversation. I will. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Yep. No, I appreciate so, it. I'm not trying to be a snot or no. a rat. No, no, we don't. You just have more time. Though. You have a legit. I do. I have great time. Did you, do you have a legit complaint? That's what I understand. No, I do. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we could. Just be at time. Yeah, I'll, I'll set this for the uh, thing with the VFW up here. If anybody wants to uh, take a look at it, yeah. And that's Decora's VFW tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 5 p.m. <laughs> What are we up for consent agenda? We've got a minute and the sheriff's quarterly report. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Here's your honor. Many reports. So we have a safety safety committee meeting with our workers' comp carrier, and that was uh, an excellent excellent meeting. It was yeah. Only focused on his presentation of we got an improvement in our safety and this has impacted our workers' compensation rate, which is all positive. Uh, we're sure that you probably were somewhere in the upper range of most counties in the state for our safety records. Yeah, it's saving us money on the premium because we're under the was it um, the rating scale. If you're at a one, it's average. You're paying the the cost, but if you're under that, everyone starts at a one. Yeah, and we're under that. We're like at point seven. I don't have my notes in front of me, so I'm trying to remember point seven something. Point seven four. And that saving us money in our premiums, so we're trying to stay at that or even lower that. But uh, we're we can be proud of one County employees for keeping our safety record at a good good pace. Yeah, if they're thinking safety first. They're thinking we certainly don't want to have to visit the hospital or have any of those things. So right. what's what's being done is very positive. One of his main points was to make sure that all the employees and department heads have the company nurse phone number at the ready so if anything happens that's the first call so it can be run through the IMWCA, the Iowa Municipal Workers Compensation Association, our insurance carrier for workers comp. Um, but it was, a, it was a great meeting and Steve and I and several other department heads and Ben are on a safety committee and we're updating the safety manual for the county right now to bring it up to speed with 2023 standards and working with that IMWCA representative to make sure we're including everything, you know, like texting on phones. That's it's new stuff that is probably not as much in our safety manual as we When's need it. When's the last time it was updated? 
Oh my gosh. Ten years ago, Ten maybe. Years ago? Ten years ago, yeah. But wow. the good the really good thing that came out of it and that is to be stressed to everyone is that the surely mentioned the the uh, county nurse when, when when an incident starts there, it gives the best opportunity for the first treatment, which you know, treating and, and addressing things early is the smart move because if somebody thinks they have a, a sprain and it turns out to be more than a sprain and they wait until it really hurts them then it's it's delayed and it's increased the severity of the of the injury the more that they report early the better the end results uh the less hospitalization the better for the for the employee so it's the awareness of safety is so so important and the safety committee's even gone through the issues of realizing that we needed to even make sure that our first aid kits were updated. You know, there's been a lot of detail in all of it, but it's all very positive. Good things happening. We had a six county meeting. Is that what you were going to talk about? No, it's public health. And they're doing flu shot clinics and they gave 100 COVID shots because you got to buy X minutes. They bought at a time because they're not cheap anymore. They're very expensive. So. They were in order, maybe one more, work with a couple other entities, see maybe order another hundred because if you don't use them, you're out a lot. Mm -hmm. What kind of shelf life do they have? Sure. They're, yeah, it's a limit. Different, the different varieties have different shelf life. So it's, they did do 100 of them, though, and they got rid of them, and they're just, just you know, if they could work with a couple other entities, maybe they get. So they, if you know you, there's, I'm not 100%, it's, they're very expensive. So that's otherwise they got clinics going on and pretty good response to them. Good. Want to talk about six clinics? We had a six area six county engineers and supervisors it was a productive meeting um it's always nice to to meet with your peers in other counties and hear what's going on there one of the main things i like to hear from last wednesday is every single engineer there said they have citizens telling them they have the worst roads of northeast iowa so we're not alone in that every county hears it so we live in rural iowa we have gravel the weather does not cooperate sometimes, but we're doing work. Everybody's doing the best they can with rock prices going up every year. So, you guys have anything to add about the six county meeting? Well, the, some of them had some real issues that they were dealing with with medical examiners and, and yeah. the loss of transport and so forth when there's been unattended deaths. That remember, the, they were you know, they might it might cost $5,000. You know, if it has to go over to Ames and for autopsy or down, and then from there down to Iowa, and yeah, why you give double? Yeah, they had sent both places. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, and so and so the next county down down down. for it. The yeah. County yeah. picked up. That is part of their okay. is part of where the property taxes go. We're fairly lucky because we have a system that's working, and we went ahead and made the investment in getting our own vehicle. And our medical examiner has drivers that's on our call list. And so we don't have the issues that some of the counties do. They don't have, they rely on the funeral homes to transport the bodies to the state medical examiner. And if the funeral homes are too busy, they won't take them. And so they're just simply the, the body. There isn't any, I mean, it's kind of morbid to talk about, but there isn't any storage facilities in Northeast Iowa. So we don't have a place to, keep the body full when it needs to go, it needs to go. And so yeah, but yeah. We, we have a good system that I'm sure other counties wish they had. Yeah. Yeah, Fayette reported that it cost them $950 to take a transport over and drop, and then again to go pick it up and bring it back, just for the transport cost. Yeah. And that's without the medical exam. Yes, that's without yeah. the risk of charge. It's several thousands of dollars with the state medical medical examiner fees, and we're we're lucky since we provide the vehicle and gas and so on. We pay three hundred dollars to the driver to make the trip, 
each time they go, whether it's to take a body or to pick one up. Then it's best if they can coordinate where they, instead of taking one down, they can pick a different one up and bring it back, you know, so we can save a trip. $300 is a lot less than 900 or so. Yeah. <laughs> I think most of the counties reported $100,000 a year for this, and we're at about 60000 total. Yeah. So it is a cost savings for the county to have our own vehicle that we have the arrangement we have with the medical examiner. We've got a tour this week at 1030 with um, the judge for District 1. Is that right? Yeah. And I'm having the opioid, opioid meeting here at 10 o'clock for the opioid task force. Tomorrow? No, Thursday. Thursday. Did I say tomorrow? Mm -hmm. say yeah, Thursday. <clears throat> and this Friday, at, uh, from public information, this Friday at 930 across the street at Decorah Lutheran is a program being put on by the Historic Preservation Commission on net, the National uh, Registry Program is for Historic Buildings. It's an all-day event. I think there's a $40 registration fee. It starts at 930. I think there's some preliminaries at 9 o'clock. It'll go till 330. Then there is, uh, it's, a, it's a state. Uh, I think SHPO is putting it on and bringing the person to explain all the whole process of how, whether it's a residence or a, or a commercial building, anything of historic nature, how it can be put on the, the register and the process of how you do it. So it's a all day seminar across the street over there in the fellowship hall, put on by Historic Preservation Commission of the County. Do you have to pre-register for that? No, I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. There'll be a registration table there. Thank you. I'll be attending to as our the board representative. That's my committee assignment. Anybody in the room go on that UTV ride for Northeast Iowa Community Action benefit? No, nobody. Just wondered how it went. Well, it's ten o'clock. Next on the agenda, a discussion of zoning ordinances pertaining to adult accessory dwelling units. I ask for that to be put on the on the agenda. There is a trend, uh, some statewide, nationally, also, or as as a method to help relieve some of the issue of affordable housing, and uh, it's been adopted in the whole. There's a, there's a lot of material available. Here's here's an example. Here is a 58 page booklet that explains the how tos and ordinance needs and so forth to accomplish this. Some of the do's and the don'ts. Uh, I'll forward that electronically to everybody on the board so you can see it. It's it's a good eye opener. There's a lot of things. Uh, Des Moines uh, instituted this uh, as a city, and there's a number of places in in the state that have done so. It gives an opportunity for where we don't have the provisions and much of our county area. This, of course, does not affect cities because they are their own entity, but it gives an opportunity. Let's say you had a large family and you wanted to, and you needed to, for your own child care and au pair or a, uh, a person like that, you'd have the ability to put a place, you know, for them to live. If you had a grandparent or whichever, we could do that in our current ordinances because you can have a dwelling unit for a family member, or you can have a dwelling unit for a farm worker on your farm. Tony Shea. Farm worker, yes, family member of a farm only. Of the owner of the farm. So this is, that's agricultural, that's under Iowa State Code. Right. The average citizen living in the county, no, you do not that's get an extra residence. So you can, so this is an option for housing opportunity, uh, for income opportunity, where people are being stretched with all of their, with with inflation and taxes and on and on and on, uh, so that we could take and investigate this and see if it's going to be an option. We're not getting in our rural communities, or unless I'm missing something in Austin, there's not new housing going in. The cost of new housing, if you consider all the subdivision work, and it gets to be very expensive. You have a certain amount of infrastructure available on existing properties. So it's been something they've been doing since back in the 80s is when this started. It's not it's not just what you would call the tiny home craze. 
but it is a place where you can create additional housing opportunity to be able to meet the needs of our community. It's very difficult to find a rental unit right now. I don't know, and where I live in Spillville, I don't know of anything. And I think that's pretty true of most places around. But I, when sometime in the past, when I did a rental survey of the downtown housing here in the historic district of Decorah, there was 100 units and there was zero occupancy. So it's a, it's a need. So this is something, this was something they had begun to discuss at the PNZ meeting this last, last week. And I'd already, I've been investigating this now for about six months. And I think it's time that we look at it in, with respect to our ordinances. If we do go down this road, my suggestion is we keep it as simple as we can. It's always been the, it's always been the directive of our planning and zoning director to keep it simple. Tony, can our local PNC ordinances go beyond Iowa code at this point? I mean, how, how would this look? Maybe be more restrictive, yes. But not less. Correct. So how, if you owned property in the country and you weren't a farmer, how would this look for Winnesha County if we explored this? Well, so that's why I'm here is I want to know what are we thinking we want to go to? Do we want this to be in the A1 districts? Do we want this only to be in the residential districts? Uh, there's just, there's so many things at play here. So just A1 districts. If it has a, if it's a separate structure, we have one rule that says we cannot have, well, forget, we have rules, all right? The septic system, one acre per septic system. So now we're talking, it has to be a two acre lot. It, there's just a lot of things. We don't allow duplexes in A1, so it can't be two and one. Uh, it, there's just a lot of things. Lots of talk. So we need to have kind of an idea of what we're looking at before we can even create regulation for it. So an idea of what you want to do before the PNZ can start drawing up regulation to match that. Sounds like we need to do some more research and. Um, that's why. That's why I want to get this on the agenda for discussion. Yeah. In action so that we direction can be given you know my my feeling personally is we need to create we're not seeing any rental or affordable housing being created by the eight small eight communities we have in the county we are the next option of being able to try to create that if we're trying to build uh, support for our local businesses who need employees how are we going to attract them if we have if we have the business park up there that's trying to bring in businesses into Winnesha County, uh, this was first. This in the county was our economic development group with Stephanie Fromm and, and uh, Maddie Putman. The city council has been looking at this for years. And it's a it's a worthy thing to yeah. be considered. And I, but I think it ought to be also available for the people with respect so they can use it also as a rental property uh, to take some of the financial pressures off of some folks. We've got, we have a lot of the zoning ordinances to look at that affect the different portions of all of our zoning areas. How far, how far or what is in the best interest of where we go is to be seen. I think we may, but I think it's time that we looked at it. I, I agree. <clears throat> a lot of those old farmhouses that used to be rented to people for lower income are just gone. They've been torn down for more field acreage. Um, so we are real low on our inventory. And I, I agree we should look into this. And, the, and I heard, you know, Wendy Stevens, the, the chairman of the PNC, made the comment this last at the last meeting. You know, these types of dwelling units are not taking away from farmland. You know, what they're doing is, you know, we've got existing, we've got existing facilities there. Uh, there may be some instances where there is capacity for a, a one bedroom or something like that to be put on, even when I asked Doug, our, our county sanitarian about it. He says oftentimes that's going to be the case, sometimes not. And then we do have the issue of, of more land uh, that's going to need be used for a septic system. But overall, I think we've got a good opportunity to look at it now and be ahead of things 
so that when the next census comes around, we're not going to be declining in our population. And for the advantage of all of our citizens, it's going to mean that it's, they're going to be, people will be making investments in their properties, which increases their assessed value. There's, there's more flow of tax dollars that are going to come back in property taxes to us as well. But at least these are not going to be, we're not seeing housing going in that's, that's being put in at the three, four, five hundred thousand dollar level that's affordable for the young people that we're having difficulty keeping in our county after they grew, come out of school. Yeah. So all of those things are an important part of this whole thing that we need to try to address and put away to try to keep more of our, of our young people, build our tax base, provide for the housing needs that are critical in this right now because we're not seeing a, our new housing startups have been up but they've been in the higher end of things they're not in in affordable things so. yeah what's um planning and zoning are they having a workshop on it? are they just talking about it or uh, it's just a topic that's come up okay. and uh, what the pnz decided was that they needed to get feedback from the board of supervisors if the board is willing to look at this before they spend a bunch of time working yeah. on it. Yeah. I, okay. I was going to we have to know what they what we want that's at, right. at well, the I, end of the game in order to know how many pieces within those zoning ordinances need to be changed in order to make this functional. I was going to suggest, I think we should have a workshop so everybody is aware of what all the different regulations are that we currently have and the zoning classifications and what the restrictions are on those before you can start to ask. That's going to take be a long workshop. Well, yeah. I mean, we got to start someplace. And Are we all in agreement around the table? It's something we'd like to look into further. I would. I would like to look into it further. I would. Yeah, I mean, you got to do something to mm -hmm. increase housing, or yeah, it's yeah, to change something. To... Yeah, we're not, and housing's not getting cheaper, but there's this is a less expensive approach. So do we? Hang on to get on the agenda for planning and zoning, or do we add an additional meeting where we can all talk about it? Or? I think a referral of planning and zoning is would be the first step. Yeah, well, we have to give them some direction first. For oh, I mean, because I heard when I tuned in, when I was when I listened to their meeting, they're asking us for some direction instead of going out there with something that's this wide, and we bring it into something that's going to give them better direction of where to proceed. Because it's going to, like Tony was just saying, it's going to impact a number of different areas within our within our ordinances that have to be looked at. So I think if we start, uh, Mark, your idea of of, uh, of just a workshop meeting mm -hmm. and having two members of <clears throat> PNC, Tony. And there, there's different levels that you can look at doing this. I mean, yes. we can look at removing housing restrictions zoning wise, just normal housing restrictions. We can look at trying to implement trailer home, trailer park homes, tiny homes into areas. We can look at, you know, just having separate living quarters in existing houses or maybe just in residential sections. So there, there's a lot of things that, a lot of paths you can take to accomplish this. So if your goal is to add housing, you have to look at, you know, the, excuse me, if your goal is to add low rent housing or low cost housing you have to look at what avenue you want to pursue to do that and then that's the avenue the pnz will work on to implement this and maybe that avenue isn't even accessory dwelling units you know maybe maybe removing the density rule in ag land is what you want to do you know to make it easier to build so i, I just think in my mind it's got to start with the Board of Supervisors for one thing. I don't think there's any use involving the planning and zoning until you have a direction. Okay. And determining that direction is going to be what you want to accomplish. Let me, uh, my suggestion is let me work with Tony to come up with some broad range things and then schedule it around it. Because I think we should, all, we should all be on the same page as far as we understand right. what the implications get, are. Let, let me get kind of an agenda okay. down maybe with Tony. Let's send out with a workshop day, look at the options of what might be the easiest or and or 
So that's why we need to be affordable. We'll see what we can start with to create a starting point. And then it's going to be, it's going to take some time after that, but we need to get started with it because we're going to, we'll, if we don't, we'll be looking at it sometime in the future. But in the meantime, we won't be solving any of the issues that we're facing. We do I'm sure there are other counties the that have floodplain stuff coming up. Yeah, it is going to be quite a bit of stuff when we put that. Doesn't seem to end, doesn't work. That's good. That's county government. <laughs> and we can check with some other counties too I'll, that have. I'll this. make sure you yeah. all get this. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll find it to be. It's a good starter point of understanding the concept and, and where the need is. I am, a, mem I am a member of AARP, but yeah, so this is because you know, this is model, model <laughs> state <laughs> act and local ordinance. So they, they're addressing it from that perspective on some of this. So and there's more. There's a whole lot more. I can send a whole list of links of, of all kinds of things that are out there, everything from from how they have tried to end some of the discrimination issues by use it by where we put in at one point back in the 60s, minimum lot sizes of certain certain things that created zoning zoning areas to el eliminate certain classes of people and so forth, and how even some cities have gone down as low as as a couple of thousand feet on a minimum lot size instead of 6,000 or 8,000, 10 or 12,000. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that are changing to try to address the different needs that people have today. And again, what this is not going to solve the issue with first time home buyers, but it's going to create some issues for yeah. relief on on shortage of, of residential housing. And that's what Tony was getting at. There's so many ways we're going to change change things to get this to work within the county. And then we got to find out how Tony can figure out how it's done simply, because that's his mantra. Always way to make it easier. Not always. <laughs> <laughs> but a lazy man is charged, you'll find an easy way out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So you're gonna work with I'm already I'll work with Tony. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Tony. You bet. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Tony. This kind of got sprung on Tony, so he's what is that? I said this kind of got sprung on Tony. <laughs> yeah, it's coming up quick. <laughs> he's been busy harvesting. All right, 1015. Next on the agenda, Andy Vandermont, the county attorney. Legal questions regarding agenda and other issues. Yeah, for me. Did you hear anything from the DNR? No, no. Yeah. I forgot to send you those two contacts for HR, and we'll do that this afternoon. Okay. Yeah. You want to go ahead and discuss about that, like an hour th three person meeting? Yep, go ahead. Well, Andy, you want to, we had a meeting with uh, with Andy uh, last week. Shirley and I did talking about our HR issues. Uh, Andy had graciously put together a long list of considerations and things that needed to be a part of as we looked at overall uh, transitioning some of the responsibilities of HR away from Andy uh, for his own his own schedule and and staffing needs to. The possibility of how we would deal with an outside vendor that provides some services to us, uh, even to the point of eventually the hiring of an HR professional uh, as a county employee, and then Andy handling, handling legal issues. But from it, you know, there, there was kind of a uh, consensus, let's say, of one thing we need to do is evaluate our employee handbook as mm. one of the top issues out of the out of the meeting and using one of the firms that we would send out an RFP to and have them do that on probably a contract basis. Uh, secondly, the an HR review department by department, similar to what was done in, by the IT groups that came in and looked at our whole county for where our exposures were, where our dangers were, where our improvement needed to be, and using a, a similar, that's that type of a firm to do that as a secondary project to give us a feel so that we looked at each department has been handling much of their own HR and giving us a, a synopsis of what we needed to do to bring things together 
And then, you know, eventually down the road, we'll need to look at our budgeting when we come into that as to when we're going to be able to, if, if that's what we choose to do, of adding an HR professional. I surely would agree. We both saw in the meeting with our with our uh, workers' comp representative how much we have need of having certain aspects of HR looking at many of the things with our injuries and so forth to keep that in check so that we're really on top of things. So we're basically a company of 140, give mm -hmm. or take, employees, and to expect full-time uh, local lawyer's office to handle the HR for all that's of the big, above. That's is a, a big, big stretch for any. Stretch. So it would be nice to do HR professionals for that. So I think that was very productive, what we, what we accomplished out of that. Andy was extremely helpful in it. Well, and HR is coming more and more into play all the time. <clears throat> yes. Every company that's out there. And so, well, also the auditor does a lot of work with the HR too, which is not necessarily their responsibility totally. Yeah. It, it makes it difficult at times just because later I may not know what the other is working on to the, and that communication can be a little bit challenging, but I, I think that the grant, the idea was the next step was trying to work with RFP for we were reviewed uh, to bring them to uh, set out some different firms in the state that are going from their work in the HR consulting areas, see what they can do. And perhaps after you know working with them for a while, you might be able to tap into their resources to decide, you know, do we have a need? Do we have the workload that uh, that would require a full time person to be helping? Yeah, so that's really important. Was discussed was really kind of a three phase stepping process. No timeline on that, but right. but to Andy, I think we have somewhere around eight different firms that we probably want to contact, something like that. I think, yeah, that 68 number sticks my mind that there's uh, uh, there's people who are very uh, involved in that uh, for other companies. <clears throat> so, so part of the end result will be driven probably by. Economics. I mean, how much money are we spending for outside? Is it we did internally and to ship load from auditor to one thing to another? Usually, it comes back to risk and reward. Yeah. We might be surprised at what we are going to be spending. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a good meeting, and, and we've got a plan put in place, and um, we'll bring the RFP to the whole group and. So we all think yeah. a move from there. Anything else? Anything important? Oh, um, the guy out on the like, Bear Creek uh, closure thing, was he in contact with him? I think uh, that's by the end of the year. No, that's all generic. He's working on us. Yeah. On which one? On the bear one. Peak and the one with the rip wrap. Oh. Yeah. I'm they only went back in a month and that was two months ago. It's the one time we were moving that direction, but yeah. And I, I think, think the last I heard they were something. they had made contact with him and he had talked to the neighbors and so the hope was that using Andy's help they were gonna get some easement agreements between him and the neighbors so you could get rid of the road. And I think that was still moving forward. It just maybe isn't as quick as you would hope. Yeah. Because it'll be snow time pretty soon and you don't want the road still being your responsibility with all that rip wrap. If there's rip wrap in it. So I have not heard anything on the easement other than uh, I think Nick sent an email a week or two ago about uh, this communication or attempt at communication on that's the last I heard. I think maybe we should put that in the agenda to move forward. Because snow is coming. We can ask Nick what you know, we can ask Nick maybe a call later okay. today and and just that Andy knows that you guys want to get it moving that we that he can work with Andy if we can do the easements. Yep. Really the easements and you gotta get that rip right taken care of. Yeah, and that does still just that sits wrong with me that somebody can do that type of work on a county road 
you know, several hundred dump loads of rock and not get a permit or any permission for it. I think we, we can't ignore that either. No. And at the cost to you. <clears throat> I can't imagine. And I think it, I would want to make sure that it's legal. Yeah, it's all right. I, I there's also carbon asphalt to do it. Yeah. on a county road. They can pave the road. Well, they can, they can pave our county roads. I, <laughs> I think there's a, a lot there that, that, that I know of the need that can't be allowed. <laughs> Let's go on. <laughs> Anyone have anything else, Randy? No. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is that more than Street sure looks right. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a lion fixing that piece of curve out there, but no. <laughs> or I mean, a piece of sidewalk out there. True passion. Yeah, it is a true passion. I was out of town this weekend, so I wasn't able to go. Did anybody in the room go to the trunk or treat at Lake Meyer? How was it? It was huge. I wonder. They get a good crowd usually. I, I've never been to one, and, and, and it was just overwhelming to see how many. Oh, good. It was like, I think, three rows of. 30 cars um, at any given time throughout the event. And uh, I mean, it was it was almost standing room only. That's know. wonderful. Yeah. Good. That's a car completed over there. That's what that noise is? Yeah. Oh, in there at that church. Carpet cleaner. Oh. Get ready for fighting. Uh, yeah, that's, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> We've got a. We're hoping to have good attendance there. <clears throat> they have one other <clears throat> presentation like this on the other side of the state. So this is the second one this year, and happens to be up here in our. That's great. Right. So it's an all day. Yes. Yeah. From, is there from a meal with it then, or no? It's just free, free for lunch. So you go downtown and visit our restaurants. So it's a, but it's. You know, the state, it's, it'll be a good quality presentation about the real nuts and bolts of it because SHPO is very much involved with that whole process and how it happens. We do have the sound system Next installation on the shed next week. Yeah, and that's Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Everybody hear that? <laughs> <laughs> so he's requesting nobody use the building next week. Yeah, so, so it's can, yeah. after Monday. We have yeah. to Monday, and then it's Tuesday through Friday. Right. Okay. Clock on the building, so they can be in here to install the. They'll have to go next event or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Monday's still the lunchroom. Yeah. The yeah, lunch in the jail. Yeah, small. Well, I start this um, leadership academy today. Wish me luck for the next eight to ten weeks through December fifteenth. So, Is that NACO? It's a national, yep, NACO leadership academy. I look forward to it. It's all online, but it's an eight week. I think through December fifteenth. And I do have office hours today. Any of the my peers are welcome to join me every day or every Monday after this meeting. I'm available for at least an hour, sometimes till four or five, depending on the day. <laughs> uh, there's department head of staff is bringing up one thirty in here. Yep. What's in here gives you some good ideas and things like there's there's an outline of local ordinances. 
<laughs> be nice if we could see if there's a list or available to tell us what counties have already worked on this and what it well, looks like. It's not an easy search. You almost have I to know. Look at it. And there's that one. Uh, not that it, not like that. That there's a list. There's a number. Of, probably the most predominant you'll find in any searches is what Des Moines did. You know, it'd be so interesting if ISAC, if we could suggest to ISAC that they start like a a clearinghouse, so to speak, or a database yeah. that you can plug in your question and see if there's a. We have that for the auditors. I don't know if you. And I'm wondering. Um, Let's contact ISAC and see if they know of anything. And if they don't, we could help them create one. Yeah, because it's uh, there is not it's not an easy search right. for the state of Iowa. <clears throat> and I'm not sure. I'll have a I can have a conversation. I'm, I'm curious to see if there's any if there's any interest at the state level to see if they'll uh, look at approaching and approaching the state <laughs> state perspective on the ADUs. It'd be a great ISAC workshop. Yeah, they're always yes. looking for topics to go. Yes. And it's a great one for what's the you know, there's such a need. And it's not getting better with housing costs. Right. And when was the last time we saw a subdivision come through the board of supervisors? <laughs> we haven't seen one this year. Well, you had uh, that doesn't come. That was not an affordable housing. No, well, that's anything. exactly what was in my yeah. head. I mean, if you loosen the regulations too, too much of an extreme, then you just let one by that go through too. And that's not your goal, I don't think. It's your goal is to get the affordable housing, not just completely. Right. Well, yeah. There's some fine lines there that have, you to, have to you have to you have to walk that you have to walk the path in partnership with the community the whole way. So it's going to be a big process. Well, most of the city, the cities, they're on their own. Yeah, that's where you can. We have we have no authority there. You know, on a lot of the city stuff too, you come down where they put regulations in where, like in Austin, there's no mobile home park. You know, that takes out. A lot of possibilities of people moving in and a, and a lot cheaper housing than yeah there is there's a lot of I, i've even seen advertisements for uh, adu type units that are built here in iowa modular to be brought in at, a, at affordable prices well iowa home prisons or iowa prison homes they're built in the prison and you can buy them for a, a fraction of the cost I think it's ninety thousand right now, yeah, and great housing that way. The contractor advertising a basic house, a uh, one bedroom house for about sixty thousand, moving onto your lot, mm -hmm. you know, and anywhere from sixty to one hundred and some thousand. So that creates an opportunity for people. It's much, much better. I'm not trying to take away from from local contractors, but if you've tried to book any local contractors mm -hmm. in the local labor forces, <laughs> that's not an easy thing to do either. Too. All right, it's 1030. Next on the agenda, Nick Frisman. Morning, Nick. Morning. From County Engineer. <clears throat> Got a few things. And then these are really the contracts mm -hmm. from last week that you guys approved already oh, uh, okay. for the materials mm -hmm. and the fuel. Well, uh, first of all, I think I'll start with the uh, recommendation for two new employees. Uh, we went through our interview process and went through the background check and and uh, contacted references, uh, interviewed five different individuals, and we are recommending uh, Karsten's, Karsten Balmer um, to work out of the Kennedyville shop for the motivator, uh, maybe equipment operator one, and Garrett Wise. Uh, again, he'll be equipment operator one, uh, but we'll work out of the Freeport shop on the bridge crew. That was Carson Balmer? Correct. Karsten Balmer. 
How do you spell wise? Since there's a couple of ways. W I S E. And usually, what we do, just because Nick maybe doesn't know our procedures either, is we'll the board will approve uh, you approve an offer to hire with uh, approval of the hire contingent on them passing the pre-employment physical. Which, which helps us with our workers' comp rate because we have a, a basis to start from with the pre-employment physical. Right. I would move to approve the hire of these two employees. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the hire of Karsten Ballmer and Garrett Wise. Uh, is there any uh, It would be approval to offer. Approval to offer and then to hire after. There after the after. and the path the probably state something that they will follow the county handbook. And that's what we do over in our county, I guess, is that the wage and, and everything follows the union. Yeah, you know, kind of, I, I guess we don't need to put that in the motion because okay. that's part of that's assumed that okay. they're going to yeah. stand your practice. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Who made the motion? I'm sorry. Shirley, Shirley. I seconded it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to make sure I have the name spelled correctly. So make sure we. E R M. Thank you. <laughs> With regard to Bridge 317A, which is the the driveway bridge to Johnson's off of River Road, um, we've got some prices in. Um, it's actually the quotes that we've got are kind of a combination of K Construction doing the abutment work and Brennan doing the superstructure work. Um, K Construction's quote is for twenty thousand for the abutment, and then Brennan's is for thirty-five thousand for the superstructure. Uh, now, the issue with that is that it only gets us to nine ton. Um, it's a truss bridge. And it gets it to the point where they can bring their LP trucks in. Um, however, staff has put together an estimate if we were to use the flat car uh, design that we've done quite a few times here in Winnipeg County, and that estimate is around hundred thousand um, dollars. My recommendation would be to go with that uh, because you're talking an extra forty five thousand dollars, but no way it's legal. It's a legal bridge, and it's probably good for. 50 to 100 years. I'm not, I don't know if we have an exact amount on those rail cars as to how long they're going to last, but probably 75 years. This truss, the fix that you're going to do to the truss, could be 10 years from now. It might have to drop back down to three ton. So we're still going to have to try to figure out a way to get LP into him. Now, apparently, an LP truck, there was a new driver and they went ahead and brought it anyways and filled it once. Um, Typically, they would have a second fill, but you just don't know depending on on the winter. Yeah. Uh, you know what what kind of winter we're going to have. So we really only have to worry about one extra fill now potentially. Um, but I, I think we can try to worry about that and and still cross that bridge. Can we we contract for a thousand gallon tank to be set there? That would be the equivalent of a second fill that was. Yeah, and I think he's, he's got another tank by his shop, I believe, so that that thing actually could be moved um, to across the bridge and have it filled that way. But you're correct. We could potentially find out if we could find a used tank and for us to bring it in. That, that would or, be an option. That we could or let the uh, propane, our propane supplier set another tank and have, we, pay, we lease it for and pay the setup and removal and get us past the bridge time to deal. Yeah. Right, you could wait. To see if they need it. I mean, if it's a correct, if it's a mild winter, they yeah. maybe won't even need it. <clears throat> or it could be that it's frozen so solid you could have them put in a, a crossing or something when you they needed it. And yeah, you're going to get the ice truck haulers to go across. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, Ben. <laughs> so we, I just cross the bridge and we get there. I think we need more because that bridge is really old. Mm. It was the bridge that was on. The canoe concrete bridge. So, and it was, I was, I was a little bit of that. So, 
box car, you know, rail the car. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what kind of weight level would the rail cars? Okay. It'll be legal, so there would not be a weight restriction on them. And I think long term, that's the best option. But yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you, your costs, whatever you said, forty thousand more, whatever. Yeah. But you also have the cost of the rail cars, which we've already bought, bought in the past. But I mean, you did that. That's part of this hundred thousand oh, okay. So, um, oh, well, I, I to be clear, I should probably verify that with staff, but. Okay, that should be part of the cost that we're. But we do have extra right now because at one point that went up on Highlandville, we bought four rail cars because we thought we were doing yep. a rail bridge, and then you ended up doing Hulk. So, so if we have rail cars already, we're not looking at hundred thousand. Not, I don't believe it's hundred thousand. In addition, like yeah. that, that should be part of this estimate, is what I'm, I'm. I would imagine that that's part of the estimate that we have to turn in. But I will hundred percent verify that with staff. Um, so that's. So ultimately, when we do our annual report, we have to assess all materials that go into a project like this, whether it's been, uh, you know, material taken out of stock or not. You still have to account for that when you put an estimate together, determining whether or not you need to have you're meeting the bid threshold per Iowa code. And the bid threshold currently is 125,000, so we would not have to go out for bids on this either. You would just go out for quotes between different bridge contractors to set, you know, to drive. Abutments on on this, we would be able to get by with probably reusing one of the abutments, um, and then building a whole new abutment, setting the rail cars on it. So I, I I think that the price of the rail cars probably in this estimate. And then oh, we'll be they'll be queuing this up for next next year. Right. We would not be able to get it done this year. Yeah. So what we're looking at, simplified terms, is we can do. The forty thousand dollar fix right now, but it would have a weight limit on it. Correct. And it may have to be redone sooner rather than later, or we can spend a little bit more now mm -hmm. and have a long term bridge. Correct. Fix. It'd be fifty five thousand. Fifty five thousand. No, it's right. Correct. Fifty five. Correct. Fifty five. The forty five is the additional amount that we're estimating. Okay. Yeah. But it may be more than the estimate. Just for our heritage. Correct. Which we've run into over mm -hmm. and over again. So yeah. either way, I think it's probably still the best option. We yeah. just keep seem to keep keep to coming down. It seems with more and more inspections. So you want a motion or since this is a quote and um, and maintenance issue, you could just proceed um, with uh, consensus the board. I think that's your call. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe the. We need a motion, I guess. Just uh, move forward. I think oh, you're here. Proceed with forward. the rail car. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Move with the rail car. That's a wise move. Yeah. We'll go that route then. Why did maybe if the new trail that we're going to put in might want the old bridge, or so we should contact them if we're going to abandon that bridge and you want to use it for the trail. You said. Mm -hmm. Okay. What trail? The nasty one that no, oh, okay. that'd be at their expense. So. Yeah, of course, but we need what to I mean, see if they need yeah, it. Yeah, they they use the old, they used one on the other trail, I know, in Old Bridge. Well, they wouldn't be able to use this one here if it ain't got a weight limit because you'd have to drive a ambulance across bridge a shot. They got to have a weight limit. I mean, if you're going to put a Bridge and on a bike trail, it's got to be ambulance accessible, mm -hmm. be able to cross, so that weight on my foot wouldn't happen. I can still jump with them, but yeah. Yeah, but if they did the modification, it should be ambulance ready. Yeah. And it still might be cheaper they, than. They, yeah, they, 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 have no one. they should have the. the uh, don't bring it up. Yeah, they can have the one down. They can have the fork bridge. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. They can have the fork bridge. Get that military. Get that away on fire. Oh, no, we tried. Hey, just get that military with a helicopter. Bring it over. You, you contact them, Mark. That's a good idea. <laughs> but Sikorsky might do it. I don't That's... Know. Other than that, uh, the single axle dump truck is done at Don's. Um, all of Truck Country sells to grab that and go through it yet yeah, possibly this week if not this week next week we should have that so we're down to just one then or that's the last that's the last one, one now 
I also stuck the uh, schedule public hearing on the Happy Hollow Road vacation under your time, so don't forget to do that. Mm -hmm. um, these are Western trucks. Is that what oh, I understand? So yeah, Western centers that are. Is that? Do you agree that that's a good truck, or is it just because they're local? It's a good buy, or because other people talk about the Mac. Which truck do you use? Or so we have two that are on order. They're the Mac and. Uh, up top of my head, I don't know the numbers behind them or anything like that, the model, but we have gotten Western Stars in the past. Um, it's just the, in this particular situation for me and Howard is the max were actually um, low on their on their S on their quote to us. So I've, I've got these are, I've got two current max with two on the way in Howard, and I think I have two or three Western Stars right now. Well, Western Stars are a pretty good truck, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Where did your service work done on the max? Is that more cross? Rochester is Rochester. Rochester there, yeah. yeah. That was the reason. Yeah, and I, I believe you have to go to lacrosse to get yours. Yeah. 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 But and we've had good luck with both Mac and, and Western Star. That's another reason why we purchased yeah. those Western Stars. Is because it's yeah. Yeah. Right they, the they, they've all gone away from the, the nested frame to back to the other solid frame. Yeah, we had a lot of pack rust issue um, on the sandwich frames um, to the point where they weren't DOT legal and had to have them fixed. Um, and so yeah, we, we can go with the continuous solid frame. I think that was our history too. Okay. Yeah. I know that was Dave's comment at the welding shop. Yeah. Because he fixed a lot. The only thing else I have is that we we have got the information to Ziegler for 111's training, but have not heard anything back on that. We'll keep you up to date when we do uh, find out what an updated trade value will be on that. Yeah. But have you consider should we consider not doing the trade and doing the online auction? As an option, have you done that? Have you done that over? In I've, I've not done it with motor graders, but I feel as if that's something that we really need to start looking into. Just because if you're if you're going a year out, you're going to have to deal with the fanny issues, potentially or an engine issue sometime down the road, and and you guys are proof of that. Um, so I I think the next motor grader that I purchase over in Howard, we're going to go that route. Maybe at the time that you. Get to the trade in, you offer it to the then yeah, for a dollar and see, see if it's something that we think is acceptable. And then at that point, you make a decision as to whether or not you go to Purple Wave or any other um, auctioning service. But I've done that with dump trucks and have had good luck with that. Um, we, we've had a lot of good luck with two different services. We've used Gov Deals um, and we've used Purple Wave. It seems that was a lot, a lot, of, top, a lot of topic to talk about that. At the six county meeting. Mm. I think in this particular motor grader, you probably need to trade one in because that was the motion. You granted it's a different dollar amount, yeah. but we did, you know, I think you kind of committed to that when we signed a, a purchase agreement with them that there was going to be a trade in on that. So you're, I would say you're probably committed on this one. Now, so you wouldn't want to take the chance if it takes a month or two to get it sold. That it, mm -hmm. Quits. Well, we're not using it right now. well, yeah, you would you would probably have it parked at that point. We yeah. have to sell it, but I think the one that we just ordered that it's supposed to come in next fall. I think that's a real option that you need to think about. Is Did you authorize the, the motion of full cost for the motor grips? Yes. You didn't want to trade in at that time. Yeah. We have to set a public hearing for the road vacation or Happy Owl Road. This is that one um, where the snow plow group wanted to put in the bridge. And so so when Nick, the, the crossing, and Nick said that he didn't think it was appropriate for them to use the public right of way. So the road department has put together a uh, road vacation on that portion of that road that we don't really use. And then the, the snowmobile, excuse me, group will. Um, work with a private landowner if they want to put in a crossing there. So it's not our 
issue. And they'll have to work with the DNR. That that would be up to them. That's up to them. That's not our problem. No, I know, but they still have to work with the DNR. If you're familiar with the Happy Hollow Road, this is we're gonna the 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 proposal is right before that bridge. There's a curve in the road there, right before the bridge, where the landowner changes where they want to start that vacation. And then it's the same landowner all the way up that hill on the other side of the bridge until it intersects with that next road. And so they want to vacate that whole section there to the landowner. And it's that hill. Yeah, that hill currently is mm -hmm. Class C, I think. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, now the boat is get rid of it. It is not a class C. I think there's a gate there. No, 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 there isn't. No, there's, there's no gate there. There's a barricade. It's, there's not, a barricade. it's not class C. It's just a barricade. There's a barricade down on that one yeah. end. It's a barricade on the end, end, so it's not, anyway, it's not a gated. It's whatever a, the current status is, we don't use that hill yeah. from the yeah. intersection of that other road at the top down to the bridge. We don't haven't used it. I don't think we've done any maintenance on that side of the bridge at all. No, no, not for looks of it. No, 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 I move that we set public hearing for the vacation of Happy Hollow Road. So I've got it penciled in as um, here's my glass. I need to read that November 6th at 10 30. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second to set a public hearing for road vacation, Happy Hollow Road for November 6th at 10 30. Is there any further discussion? Um, all those in favor? Here's the uh, resolution. Oh, right. Shirley? Aye. Mark? Aye. Mark? Aye. Steve? Aye. I also. Motion carries unanimous. Will you remove the gravel from that road then? Be big here. Well, yes. I mean, it might cost us more than four thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah there's probably not much on that side of the bridge. They have been graveling down to the bridge because there's farmers on both sides. Yeah, that's, 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 that's on the other property. Yeah, the juice of the other properties. That we get rid of it. Does anyone have anything else for Nick? Oh, uh, the. On Bear Creek, uh, Rip Rap Road, was there any progress on that? Or? Um, I have not had a conversation. Last week, I did not have a conversation with his attorney or him himself, but uh, the previous week, I had had a conversation with his attorney, and I, I know he was going to start working on it last week. I had sent him a template easement that um, we had used in Howard County for private private to private easement. So, um, and we mentioned it to Andy today if there's any you need Andy to look over anything. Yeah, he'll, we'll definitely have to have Andy look over it once uh, Jeremy Thompson gets that documentation to us. Would that next Monday be too early to get an update on that? No, I can certainly. Should we, should we set a public hearing in a month out or something anticipating the easements getting put in place? Because if we wait for the easements, mm -hmm. Then you got to wait another three weeks to get the public hearing done. So then we're into the winter. I mean, we have to plow it. Yeah. Well, well that's level C. It's a level that C. is level C. The tree there, even the section that he paved is is officially level C. I believe. So he did. Does have the gates? That he took down. Yeah. We need to get back. Yeah. And I I want to make sure that pond back there, who has jurisdiction on that and the access they would need to those easements. So maybe as soon as it's convenient for your staff to you know put together that paperwork, we should at least get that on the schedule, hoping that those easements get worked out. Worked out. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if the public hearing date comes and they you don't still don't have the easements, you can continue the public hearing on a weekly basis yeah. until you have the easements worked out and then finalize it. So. Yeah, I will get in touch with with his attorney and no, we'll yeah, find some out. We can set a public hearing next Monday. Then at uh, least, yeah, maybe at least we can get that that in the works. Yeah. That, that's with our paper publishing schedule. It usually takes about three weeks to hold a public hearing. So. Yeah. Anything else? 
I think you're good to go. All right. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dick. Thank you very much. Thank you. 1050, some miscellaneous items. First of all, set a public hearing for Baumler rezoning request. Um, I got this paperwork from um, uh, Tony Phillips. I don't know anything about the request, but uh, he's um, penciled it in as October 30th at 10 o'clock, and it's a resolution. Do we know what the project is? I don't have any information on it. What we is that? I, I didn't get you the detail. It was on your last. It was on their agenda Monday last or um, last Tuesday night. That was previously approved. We are just setting the public hearing now, yeah. so you would have time. We have next week to look at it. Yeah. So not, you have actually, it's the 30th, so you have, should have a few weeks. You weeks. Know, two weeks. We usually go, don't get these in the mail until the Friday before the 30th. Is there a way we could get those sooner rather than later? Yeah, product stop in the zoning office. Stop and get one. I move to approve the October 30th public hearing for the Ballman rezoning request. Second. We have a motion and a second to set a public hearing for the Ballman rezoning request for October 30th at 10 o'clock. It is a resolution, Shirley. Aye. Mark. Aye. Mark. Aye. Steve. Aye. I also. Motion carries. Start. Accept and file the annual financial report of WinMet. I'll set the actual document here for you to look at. For you aren't making any comment on its accuracy or validity, or just they have to file a copy with us. So, and they are. I am. I will be working with them to get. They want to come and give a presentation to the board about their. And finances, so that that'll be in another month or so. I think I'm going through that that court. No, mm -hmm. I won't pretend. You know, I will take it back when you guys are done looking at it, whether it's today or next week or whatever. The I move to here. accept and file the annual financial report of the wind. <clears throat> I'll second that. We have a motion and a second to accept and file the annual financial report of WinMed. Is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same side. Motion carries unanimously. I have many years worth of these and none. Final and Anyone gets bored. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of reading. Next up. Discuss lease with historical society for storage in old jail. I had not had any con contact with them this past week, so I'll put on it. It's on this week's agenda. Maybe Friday. Friday is a good chance that I might be able to see. So table yeah. for Monday? Table next week. Okay. Next up, discuss Freeport property IRP request. I guess we're kind of frozen there too. You can tell me to find out back from the DNR. DNR. Yep. Yeah. Table. Next, uh, discuss act on county engineer hiring. I didn't know for sure because I had to put the agenda out Friday morning. I didn't know for sure what the status would be, so I put this on here. We really don't have a whole lot to discuss on that right now. No. Table for Monday. Next week. Yes. yes. And uh, we have one thirty p.m. department heads meeting. So a motion to adjourn. Second, second. Motion is second to adjournment. Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. It'll be a short one. Thank you. Depending. Thank you very much.